What's up guys, I'm at the range to do another ballistics gel test today. I have my 308, this is a new AR-10 I just put together. It's a uh, magnesium receiver set with a carbon fiber handguard, so it's pretty lightweight. Gun was a little under seven pounds bare, and then with the scope, I believe it's like eight and a half pounds or so. Um, it has an 18 inch barrel on it, but the bullet that we're gonna be testing today is another bullet from Cutting Edge. This is a 100 grain Raptor, so very light, and I'm hoping we can get it going very fast. This is another brass Raptor, so I got the magneto speed on the gun. I'm going to take a few shots at the target, check velocity and point of impact, and then we're going to shoot some gel. I also brought a deer shoulder and some ribs to see how these perform in a different type of media, not just the gel. So let me get set up and we'll do some shooting. Thirty-two ten. Thirty-one eighty-six. And thirty-two oh two. All right, so the average is pretty much right at thirty-two hundred, and we got an SD of twelve. So not amazing. I'm not going to take any more shots just because these bullets are super expensive. I was kind of hoping they were going to go a little bit faster, but this is just an 18-inch barrel, so let's shoot some gel. Well, I forgot to turn my camera on for slow motion, um, but I got a nice solid hit dead center of this block. Block's not super clear. It's been melted a few times, but that is some nasty wound channels right there. We got pedals, pedals, pedals. The base penetrated, continued on, and... Uh, you can see the difference between a block that has never been melted down and one that has. And the base is right here. So kind of the same thing I see with all these bullets that fragment. They stop halfway through the second block, which is about uh, 25 inches or so of penetration. That is a huge wound channel. So my biggest concern with all these types of bullets is how would they do on bone? On a broadside deer, this would be devastating. You punch through the ribs, you're in the vitals. But what if the deer's quartering towards you and you got to hit the deer shoulder? Will it... Will the pedals deploy after the shoulder? Are they going to hit the shoulder and stop? So that's what we're going to find out right now. All right, guys. So to test how this does against bone, it's not an ideal setup. Um, I usually like to put this stuff in front of gel, but I don't want to get meat inside the clear gel since it doesn't go bad and you're going to have rotting meat inside a synthetic gel. But I got a deer shoulder that was all freezer burnt and nasty and some deer ribs too. And I got a milk jug, so we're going to see how much energy does this bullet with the pedals carry through the shoulder and the ribs. Can we blow up this milk jug, or is it just going to be the base that punches through? Then I just have a cardboard box here, because I want to see what actually makes it through the jug. Will any pedals make it that far? I mean, I highly doubt it. Um, so anyway, we're going to shoot this and see what kind of energy transfer we get into this water jug. All right, so in the cardboard, the base definitely hit here, and it looks like we got one pedal there. That's about all that made it all the way through. The base went through all the cardboard, which doesn't surprise me. Milk jug is definitely shredded. Looks like we got a pedal in there. Um, I have to look at the slow-mo to see how much it really blew up, but it looks like there's some pretty good energy transfer there. Now the ribs. That's devastating. That's insane. You can put your hand in that. It just blew that completely up. And the shoulder. So, entry side, right in the scapula, right where I was aiming. That's kind of the thick part of the scapula, too. And the back side, nice big hole. Nothing too insane, but that is pretty crazy. So, I have one more of these bullets. Um, I think what I'm going to do is set this up, try to go right for the heavy leg bone here. Now, I already blew up my water jug, but we can put this here and just kind of see how the pedals do. Um, fortunately, I got the box with the gel block. Everything soaked. Gel blocks are soaked, so I guess it did blow up that jug pretty good we got chunks of meat all the way over here so i have to say that would probably be uh pretty deadly on a deer let's take one more shot 
All right, let's see what happened. Well, it looks like I hit a little high. I didn't hit the leg bone here. I just clipped the top of the meat. So pretty much just hit the ribs, nice hole in the ribs. And then since it just blasted this cardboard, can't even really tell the pedal holes. Then on the back side, we got the base that came through. So pretty big hole just from the base, but the pedals did not make it through all these layers of cardboard. Don't know if I'll actually try to dig them out or not, but anyway, I think this bolt would definitely be pretty devastating. I'd probably maybe avoid that real thick leg bone, but I wouldn't be afraid of a scapula. All right, let's get home and check out the gel. All right, so let's take a quick look at these blocks. Obviously, this is the entry block. I decided to stand them up this time so you could have some light behind them. This one is not nearly as clear as it used to be. It's probably been melted three or four times. So as you can see, the bullet came in. So we have around just under two inches it started to open up. Pedals came off right around the, I would say the three inch mark. Maybe a touch earlier. It's hard to say if they start to separate here or here. I mean, they deviate from the main wound channel right here, but I'm going to say they probably started to come off a little bit sooner. So probably the inch and a half to two inch mark. And then they traveled up to seven inches or so. Um, so definitely nice wound channel. And as that base broke off, I mean, the base itself continued to make a large wound channel because it had, you know, some nice velocity. So even in here, you're at, you know, it's about an inch and a half wide wound channel. And that really stretches about to the eight inch mark as things start to taper down but even at eight all the way up to you know 11 12 inches it's still pretty wide so i would say from pretty much one to ten inches this thing dumped a ton of energy which is perfect for white tail you're right in that um you know the vital zone there so moving over this way the base is right here so that base stopped you're at seven and pretty much seven and a half inches so that would be 23 and a half inches of penetration. So I thought 25, it's a hair less, but still great performance. Um, I'll dig that base out. We can take a look at it. Now taking a look at the at this block again, just to kind of look at these pedals. Um, if we go from this pedal to that pedal, pretty much you have a five inch wide wound channel. So off that main, you know, wound track, you have two and a half inches on either side which is great if you somehow miss the vitals you know you're a little bit far back or something those pedals should definitely catch you know some vitals for you so i'm gonna dig out that bullet and i also i did bring home this cardboard i do want to just start digging out and see how many layers those pedals went through and take a look at uh, what exactly happened here of that cardboard so this is the shot that you know went through the milk jugs and everything and this was that second shot that just hit some of the meat in the ribs so you can see the pedals out here. So let's just flip this over. And the pedals are still going. They definitely spread out quite a bit now. That's, you know, big wound channel. And even just that base, I mean, that's bigger than 30 caliber right there. So I said that's about uh, three inches. It's like a little under three inches of cardboard there. So... That's going that way. Let's pull out some more. Another couple inches. So this is the entry side. We've got our pedals here. Let's flip this thing over. And you can see how wide the pedals are here. They keep spreading out. So it makes me wonder, that first shot that went through the milk jug, I only found one pedal in the milk jug. I'm wondering after they went through the meat if they were so far spread out that they just kind of hit the corners of the milk jug and actually exited. And that's why one did clip the uh, the box of cardboard. So, a few more pieces. Let's flip this over. So we got one pedal here. It looks like they stopped kind of in here so we got this is the entry side you got one two there's like a little nick here three four all right so the pedals should be somewhere 
in here are the next few pieces. Now, just to kind of show you guys, let me angle this up a little bit. You know, this is how much cardboard we're talking about here. So, you know, you've got seven inches of like six and a half inches of cardboard. So, it's not like cardboard is very hard, but those little petals are still, yeah, they're making their way through there, which is pretty good. So, as we go. All right, so I was able to find three of those petals. The other ones, they're lost in there somewhere. But these things are like little razor blades. They're sharp on every side, and these are just going to be tumbling through your target. So these are going to cut things up pretty good. Even though they are small, I think uh, they'd still do some damage in a deer. So that one is six grains. Six grains, 6.2. And another five nine, so six grains. And then the retained shank. This will focus. Come on, there we go. So this thing, I mean, that's some crazy edges on the front. That's probably why it did so much damage. It's kind of like a little cup with razors on the top. And that is 65 grains. So overall, I'm very impressed with these. I think I'm going to use this to shoot a deer this year. I was kind of hoping for more velocity. If I was to use a faster burning gunpowder, I could probably get more velocity, but I'm getting good groups and the gun sighted in. And since hunting season's already here, I'm probably going to stick with this load. So I'm impressed overall, and uh, we'll see if I can get a deer with them. So like always, guys, please like and subscribe, and thanks for watching.